to be eight feet long, right? So from like the center of your house or a room to the outside is eight feet, but you want that to be five feet high. You're going to want to know how long to cut that board, aren't you? At least I would. I want to know exactly how long to cut it because I don't want to guess and check. I want to be able to say, oh, here's an eight foot section, here's a six foot section, and here's a whatever we're going to figure out foot section, we'll put them together and I can guarantee you it's going to be a right, right angle. Don't you want to be able to do that? That'd be kind of nice. So we're going to call this side, if we don't know it, what do you want to call that? You call it hypotenuse, you call it H, you call it X, whatever you want. Pick some variable for it. I'm going to pick X, just to, or H. Well, it doesn't really matter. H. Now we're going to plug this all into the Pythagorean theorem. So watch carefully. I'll do this for you one time. I'll have you do a couple of, in just a minute. What was one of your legs again? Six. What's the other leg? A. And the hypotenuse we have as a letter? A. So Pythagorean theorem says the leg squared, one of the legs is six. It doesn't matter what order you have this in because addition is commutative. It doesn't matter which one comes first. So one of the legs squared. Notice I have to have that square up there. Plus, what's one of the other legs? A. Equals. Eight squared. Now question, is it H? Or H squared? H squared. Square. Square. Raise your hand if you're okay with that formula. Good. It should be a leg squared plus a leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared. Can you do these numbers? Yes. How much is that? 36. Plus? 64. Equals H squared. This is a formula. Okay, we're working it down now. It's an equation. Can you combine like terms? Yes. Oops, not K. H. Hey, wait a second. Is the hypotenuse 100? No. Well, that doesn't make sense. I mean, think about this for a second, all right? If I said, I want you to make up a roof, and you're going to have 6 feet and 8 feet. How long is this? You go, 100. What? 100? Well, that doesn't make sense, because if you have 6 and 8, 100 is way, way too long. You with me on that? It'd be like, doing, it'd be like saying this, basically. Here's your 6-foot side, and here's your... 8 foot side and here's your 100 foot side. Well, that's a little bit long for my overhang, okay folks? I don't really want that. Make a lot of Christmas lights that way, but that would look pretty stupid. It wouldn't be supported, it's not even levered out there, so it'd fall right off your board or, or warp. So no, it's not going to be 100. We've got to take care of that square. Now here's the whole reason why you learn square roots right now. What you need to know is that in order to undo a square, this is the first time you've seen this in this class, right? A squared. In order to undo a square, this is an equation, right? Whatever you do to one side, you can do to the other side. You can take the square root of both sides. You remember talking about square roots when we first introduced it? I said square roots were the opposite of squaring a number, yeah? So if I have the squaring of a number here, if I want to undo that, I just got to take the square root of both sides. Quick question. Over here, what am I going to be left with? H. Yeah, a square root and a square, they undo each other. I'm left with h. That's what I wanted to be left with, right? I wanted that h. How much is a square root of 100? 10. Do you now know how, to cut, how long to cut your board? So here's what you would do in practical life if you really wanted to check the wall. You'd go over to that wall right there. You would measure up 6 feet, right? you put a little mark. You'd come out straight across from it. You'd measure out 8 feet on the floor. You'd put a little mark. You'd take a piece of string from the mark on the wall to the mark on the floor. If it's not exactly 10 feet, you know what that wall? What's something about that wall? It's not straight up and down. It's, it's, if it's less than 10 feet, it's leaning this way. If it's more than 10 feet, it's leaning that way. Does that make sense to you? That's a very quick way you can check the square on a wall. Also, uh, one application of some of this stuff is that uh, checking the frame of a car. If you ever bought a, an old car, you want to make sure the frame's straight. Because if the frame's not straight, it's never going to run straight no matter what alignment you do to it. Uh, so you, you go underneath your, your car and you check it from two opposite corners, the same, same like visual points, like you, you check uh, cross member to cross member and cross member to cross member, and if they're not exactly the same length, then your car's not straight. It's either, like the box would be like, or like that. If this one's shorter than this one, it's crunched this way. If this one's shorter than this one, it's crunched this way, and it's never going to run true. That's one application of not only Pythagorean theorem, but a, a little bit of geometry as well. But this stuff really is applicable to your life. So you're starting to see that stuff? It's kind of cool. Pretty nice. Let's go ahead and let's find out a couple more examples here. Um, I'll show you how to find a length that's not a hypotenuse in just a bit, and then we'll be done. <coughs> No, 
okay, here you are, and you need to get to the third window, because you're a fireman of a burning building. Oh no, I'm burning. <laughs> That's fire. Okay. And you're over here going, oh crap. I need to help this this cat or whatever. Here's a cat. Meow. There's a tail. I have no idea what that looks like. I'm not at all. Sure. Alright, so let's just pretend <laughs> to make it easy, let's say you're standing nine feet away from the building. This is just to make it easy, okay? You could do this with bigger numbers, but I really don't want to do that right now. And this is seven feet up. It's a very short building, okay? You could just reach up and grab this cat. I understand that. But let's pretend you wanted to find out how long the ladder would have to be to go from where you are to where that cat is, or person, or whatever you're trying to say. We want to figure out how far H is. What I'd like you to do right now is set up the formula. How many people have that? Good deal, all right. Now we take the squares of these numbers. We get 81, we get 49, and we get still h squared. You have h squared, don't you? Yes. Now add them together. How much do you get out of that? 130. 130. And you go, okay, how do I get rid of the square here, folks? What are you going to do? Square root, that's what gets rid of a square. You just got to remember that you need to do it to both sides. <coughs> so the square root of h squared, the square root of 130, we're going to get h and, well now wait a second, what's the square root of 130? Well how'd you find that? Is it on the list? No, well we know for sure that it's supposed to be a little less than 12, don't we? So somewhere between 121 and 144, so it's between 11 and 12. Use your calculator, figure out the approximation to the first decimal place, 11.4. So we'd say, well, this is about 11.4 feet or inches or whatever you're, you're trying to measure that. In this case, it'd probably be feet or yards. Probably not yards, it'd be long way. Do you feel okay with the Pythagorean theorem so far? Yes. Now, one other very important application, maybe even more useful than this, is finding out the length of a missing side. This is the last example we'll do, and then I'll, I'll give you one that we'll just talk about briefly, um, but I, we won't actually do it. So this is our last example for today. This is also pretty useful. If you know the length of your roof needs to be 13 feet, and you know that this length is seven, you could be able to cut a beam, uh, actually be a post, to hold that roof, roof up. So we need to find out this length right here. Now, what sides have I given you? Have I given you both legs here? No. no. How many legs have I given you? One. And the, could you still set up the Pythagorean theorem? Yes. Now just watch carefully, here's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna call this X or L or some variable for sure, but check it out. If you've got leg squared plus leg squared, well, we'd have leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Leg squared, x squared. Leg squared, 7 squared. Hypotenuse, 13 squared. It is this, isn't it? Leg, leg, hypotenuse, leg, leg. You guys okay with that one? Yes. Now, go ahead and square the numbers, and you're going to get x squared plus 49 equals, what was this one? 169. Good. Hey, hey, look at it. Look at it. Can you solve that for x? Yeah. yeah. Minus sure. 49. Minus 49. Okay, so we're getting x by itself. You get x squared equals, I think, 120. Yeah. 
Are you done? No. What do you have to do now? Divide. Not divide. Um, square. square. Square root, yeah. You know, a lot of people get confused with that. A lot of people give me the answer of 60 here. We're not dividing. We're not. We're taking a square root. X is about equal to, oh, it's, it's really close to 11. 10.1. 10.1, no. 10.95. 10.95, probably. Hey, the square root of 121 is 11, right? Yes. So that's, yeah. yeah so the square root of 120 should be really, really close to 11. Really close. You had two options for this problem. You can use your calculator to give me this decimal, or you could have simplified it using the way that I showed you, and if the book asks you for an exact answer, that's what they want you to do. This is an approximation. An exact answer would be to leave it the square root of 20, or sorry, the square root of 120, or to simplify it using the method I just showed you. One last, very last thing. If I give you this problem, can you identify the legs in the hypotenuse? Yeah. No. Which one is the hypotenuse? The X. The X. Good. The legs are 7 and 3 there. Are you guys with me on that? Yeah. Okay. Tell me we'll feel pretty good about what we talked about. Good.